Hi, this is Lorraine Watry, and I am going to be uh, explaining how I do a soft focus background for this painting that I am going to be doing for a demonstration for a workshop coming up. And I have uh, the painting that I did um, prior to this to get an idea of what colors I was going to use. This is my finished piece, as you can see. And I have... Um, a pink and yellow columbine with a soft focus uh, background and so I thought I would uh, create this video so that you can see how I how I did that. I'm going to move this one out of the way and uh, the first thing you'll notice is that I have uh, masked or taped uh, my main flower and the stem and uh, the bud that is a part of the painting. So this is a close-up of a single flower and a bloom. And then um, I have also used uh, masking fluid to mask the smaller pieces of uh, the main flower. So I um, put that on where it was a little uh, thinner lines or, or rounder shapes. And then I used uh, masking tape over my pencil and used an X-Acto blade uh, to carefully go around and cut uh, the um, form out of the masking tape. So my pencil line was still not um, extremely dark. It is uh, viewable through the masking tape as long as you have masking tape that is a creamy color and not colored um, like blue or some of the other colors they have out now and um, you just take your time and you have to make sure that your blade is uh, sharp and it should be a new blade. Uh, if it's not sharp, you could uh, actually press too hard and cut through your paper and or gouge it so that the um, paper is either uh, cut or you might have a groove in the paper that the, the ink or paint wants to sink down into. So, um, and for me, this works really well because now I can just focus on uh, painting the background and I don't have to think about carefully going around each of the parts of the main flower or the main object. So my paper is uh, stretched, which means I did my drawing on the surface of the paper and then I went and uh, to the sink and I wet it. Um, on both sides and then when your paper flops over and it usually takes a couple minutes two to three minutes um, it is ready to staple down so underneath the tape on the edges I have staples and uh, when you say stretching that doesn't mean that you are actually pulling on your paper so once I have wet it I set it on my board and then I um, tape or staple it down and then tape it and I have a video uh, that I will try to link um, to this video so that you can watch uh, how I stretch my paper if you'd like to see that. The other thing you can do, which I did not include in the stretching um, video, is that there are a couple other ways you can um, sort of uh, stretch your paper. One is to roll masking tape and attach the tape uh, behind your paper and um, then you can attach it to the board that way. Or you can, um, before doing any kind of um, wetting of the paper, you can set it on your board, um, tape it down, and uh, make sure it's at least a half an inch in from the edge, and then wet it with a brush over the whole thing. And I would do that two or three times so that the paper really gets saturated with water, and then um, you have to let it dry completely for whichever um, form of stretching you're going to do. If you wet the paper, you want to make sure that it's completely dry. And the way you know it's completely dry is uh, it uh, has no temperature. It doesn't feel cool. Um, if it's wet, it will feel a little cool to the touch. All right, so I'm going to get out my color. And because this background is a um, quarter sheet of paper and there's quite a bit of background, I am going to get out extra paint because I want to make sure that I don't run out um, in the middle of what I'm working on. So this is uh, sap green and I decided to use sap green for this one uh, because it just was um, a, a nice deep green that I could add um, some blue to to um, 
change it a little bit even darker if I wanted to and it worked well with the other um, colors that I was using the yellows and the pinks that were in there so I'm going to set this up here and my drawing that I have on my paper has um, some little round circle areas and in uh, photography when you're looking at uh, a, a scene and you've kind of blurred the background you might get what's called bokeh and that's those little round circles uh, that appear in the image um, because of how the lens and all of that is seeing things so um, I like that in my close-up images it 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 just makes it interesting to me and adds to um, the background instead of just having it be one solid color so those are things that would probably be flowers or maybe light catching something in the background and so I like including that and so I have the sap green out I'm going to get my ultramarine deep and I use mostly Daniel Smith paints but my ultramarine deep is a Holbein pigment because um, Daniel Smith doesn't have this particular uh, darker ultramarine and here's that and these two colors are the ones I'm going to be needing the most of so I'm going to really get more out and I'm just kind of really pushing my brush around in the well to get the paint onto the brush and sometimes it doesn't want to adhere to your palette even if you've roughed your palette up a little bit or if it's a palette you've used for a while I cleaned this one just recently um, just water and my towel and so that blue is not wanting to kind of adhere to the surface and let go of the brush so I'm just going to use the edge to kind of get it to release a little bit so I may have to get more of this out at some point Okay, and then I'm going to get out my pink and my, I believe I used two yellows in the original one, so I will pull two yellows out in case I need them. And I have both uh, containers. I have a container for uh, cleaning my brush. That would be the dirty water that I'm cleaning in right now. And then I have a container that I use for uh, my clean water. So I always um, have both in case I need to have some clean water to use on my paper. All right, and then I'm going to get out the uh, Quinn Rose. a little more I don't need a lot of that just because it's not going to be really large areas and the last two will be the yellows and I may get out a touch more of the sap green before I start so I'm pulling out some of Oriolan yellow and Oriolan yellow is a uh, cooler yellow it leans a little more toward green in uh, when you're looking at yellows it's not um, as orange a yellow and again I won't need a lot of that so I'm pulling that out and then I will get out some new gamboge which is a warmer yellow and um, it leans toward orange okay and so this just gives me options I can vary what I'm doing in the painting background with those different colors and then just a little more sap green and I should be ready and it's best to especially if you're doing a background like this wet and wet um, it's best to pull out um, all of your colors beforehand because you could um, wet the paper and then if you haven't pulled out your color or if you have to take a long time getting your color out uh, your paper could be drying before you get a chance to even start painting and 
um, and then you're having to stop and start or and or it could affect your painting because it could um, cause uh, areas to be drier than others and so I just pull out all of my pigment first and now I'm going in for the water and I'm going to just apply it to the surface with this big brush and get it on as quickly as I can and I'm going over the entire background surface even the places that I might paint um, a different color than the green because um, I want it all to be soft focus and not to have hard edges and I'm just painting right over the taped and masked areas and whenever you use masking tape you should press it down um, just make sure after you've cut it and all of that that you go back and just give it a little bit of pressure around all of the edges so that you can make sure that it's not going to allow any paint to seep under and the tape that I use is a Scotch brand masking tape and it is um, called Pro Painter and it says high adhesion on the interior um, piece of the information so it means it's uh, extra sticky and will hold well okay and I did go back up on the top edge just to make sure that it wasn't drying before I started now the first thing that I want to do is um, start with my little circles or bokeh areas and right now my board is tipped it's about mm, two inches off of my art table and so I'm using that for gravity but I may decide that I don't want it tipped that I want the paint to kind of stay where I'm putting it a little bit more so for right now I'll have it up there but then I may take it down as I'm working all right I'm gonna just make sure my brush is really clean so I'm using my clear water and I'm going to go into the yellow first and you could even leave some of these um, areas of bokeh as um, whites. You wouldn't have to put color in there if you don't want to. And um, I like to vary the color just a little bit. And the color will move farther than where you put it, depending on how wet your paper is and how... Um, wet your uh, brushes when you go to apply the paint just cleaning it a little bit and then I'm going to get some of my rose with just a touch of the yellow in it because I want to kind of um, neutralize it just a little bit meaning I don't want it to be too bright a pink in the background I want it to have a little bit of some softer or less vibrant feel to it Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit of the pink up in here. And I have a little down at the bottom. I think I'm going to put just a touch in there. And then I'm going to go back to my oriole and yellow and it's already my paper is already starting to dry just a touch at the lower side here so I'm going to have to move kind of quick to make sure it doesn't completely dry before I want it to okay so I've got those uh, lighter kind of brighter colors on there and now I'm going to come back with my sap green and I'm going to start in the corner so I want that corner to be a little darker so I've gone over to my ultramarine deep and put some of that in there now as I come down around the bokeh areas I am going to stay back from them just a little bit because my color is going to want to move into those um, it's going to keep moving uh, inward 
So if I create sort of a circle shape, it's going to want to fill it in and make that area even smaller um, than where I put the paint. So I want to be careful that I don't go too far, um, too close, because it might take out um, that shape completely if I go in too far. All right, um, some sap green up here. And I like how the sap green is lighter in some places and darker with the ultramarine deep in others. So I'm going to just kind of keep working with that. Now I do need to pull out some more ultramarine deep. I didn't quite get out enough. So what I'm going to do is get to a place where I can pause and um, I'll put a little bit of water on the paper. So I'm just kind of filling in some of these areas that act as natural breaks and then I will bring some more water onto the paper. So this area right here and I'm trying to stay away from the green that I just put on because I don't want it to move too much and um, run as I'm doing this. Now I have to be also be careful those colors that I put on earlier I might end up with a little bit of blooming happening so I may have to come back and, and put some uh, paint in those areas as well because I am adding extra water to this area of the paper it might um, push some of the colors that I've already applied around and cause blooms. Okay so I'm going to get out as quickly as I can some more of the ultramarine deep and even if I just have it wet and have to put my brush in there that would be fine as well. Okay and I'm using a, a separate brush for that so that I can keep going. I'm going to add a little bit of blue up in here and I'm just going to go right in my well because at this point I need to keep moving so most of the time I try not to go into the well um, directly because I like to keep my colors as, as bright as I can and um, that can start muddying up your your paint so I'm kind of liking some of the lighter pieces right there so I'm going to leave that and then as I'm moving down I will kind of see how wet this area is or not and then make adjustments if I need to so some of the yellow that was in right here has moved down but some of that will disappear because I can just take my green right over it and it won't matter and I'll come in just a little bit right there and then I'm going to release some of the blue out of the brush Okay. pull up some more of the sap green now right now the paint on my palette is not very wet anymore which is actually a good thing because if the paint over here was really wet and I went to apply it where the paper is drying it could um, cause blooms in my final um, outcome so having the paint on my palette be just a little drier is a good thing. Now at the bottom down here there is um, a big area that is uh, a bead of water that has collected at the bottom because my palette or my board is tipped and um, because of that I will need to go in and kind of wick that up a little bit with my brush in a few seconds here. So just want to make sure I have enough value. If my um, background can be painted in one pass, it will be a fresher, um, nicer looking um, image or, or background, I should say, than if I um, had to come back over it. So if I can put it in and leave it alone, that is the best um, thing to have happen. All right, so down at the bottom, I'm drying my brush so that it's just damp, and then I can just touch, and it will lift up 
that pigment or that little bead of water and paint and that keeps it from pushing back um, later. Now there is also a little bit here on this side and some right up in here along the tape edge so I'm just going to carefully pull that up. The one thing you need to be careful of is that you're not um, stroking over the surface because then usually with a drier brush like this it will lift um, the pigment so I'm not trying to pull any color out of there and I do want to add just a touch more um, in a few places so that it's dark enough re-wet my pigment here so I can get a little more out so at this point everything is kind of wet and um, I have a few seconds to make some adjustments. This has started to dry because it's lost its shine, so I don't want to go up into that area, but down in this lower section, I can add um, a little more um, depth by adding to it. So the one thing you just may have noticed that I did was after I mixed the paint, because I pulled some water out and it was a little wetter, I took my paper towel and I dried the back edge of my brush because I don't want um, as much moisture in the brush and so by drying that um, back edge that will keep um, me from having keep me from putting too much water um, with the uh, paint onto my paper and keep it from causing blooms. Okay, Just a touch more so a little more blue and I'm going to just kind of Put that down in this corner. All right. All right, so I think I am done with uh, this background and uh, I think it will dry uh, with enough uh, value enough darkness that uh, my flower will pop from it when I go to paint that in later so I am going to leave it and let it dry and um, if you paint a, a background in and you need it to be dark and it's not quite dark enough the best thing to do um, if you're uh, needing to go add some more value but maybe it's already started to dry this is um, pretty dry up here and if I tried to go back into that, I could cause issues the whole way through. So it is better to let it dry and then re-wet the whole thing and then adjust where you need to adjust. But um, yeah, in general with watercolor, if you need to make adjustments, uh, most of the time it is better to let an area dry and then come back and re-wet and make adjustments um, after it has dried so one thing I just noticed is I have a little bit of a lighter edge right there where it, the water um, moved down the the paper on the side and I don't want to leave that there because it could cause um, a light line right there on that side so I'm just adding a little bit and if the other thing you might have noticed is just dabbing color sometimes I'm not really even stroking it on I'm just touching and letting it come off my brush onto the paper. All right, so I think I am done with that and hopefully that helps you understand how you can do a wet and wet background with the look of some bokeh and um, a little bit of variety of color and um, happy painting. Thanks for joining me, bye.